Hey, welcome back to the show. Today is November 8th, 2016. I'm sorry that I haven't done news in a few weeks, but I've been building this new studio and I've just almost finished so I can start doing the news once again. So Kodak has come out with a new logo, which is a bit of a mix of the old logos with a newer look. I hope this means that they're going to start looking backwards towards the products that made them famous and start, you know, relaunching maybe film or different options like the Super 8 camera and other products that, you know, are so important to Kodak's history, but nowadays have been mostly forgotten. Also, Leica has announced the new Sumeron 28mm f5.6. This is um, basically the old design in a newer lens case with a black hood and it remembers the old Sumeron 28. It's very small. It kind of has a lot of vignetting. If you look at the pictures online, they look like kind of a Lomography lens. I'm betting if you shoot black and white and you usually don't care about shooting 5.6, even f8 or f11 like I shoot, you won't care about that vignetting because it'll go away and black and white actually is something that sometimes helps the image. But a lot of people are not liking it. I'll leave the links below to the product and the pictures so you can tell for yourself. Also, Fuji has given a little hint with a preview video of their new Instax Square camera. You can't really tell much, but they have a video which is kind of cool. The camera looks interesting because now that they came out with a new Square film, they're going to have to come out with a whole new line of Square Instax cameras. Them and everyone else like Lomography or whoever wants to pitch into that film. So we'll see what happens in the future with that. So Ferrani in the last few weeks has been coming out with updates weekly, basically. Uh, they were talking about um, preparing the new base for the film, the chemicals, the new cook, which is, you know, designing the new chemicals that need to be done for their slide film. So this is probably telling us that they're going very fast at the end of the project. It's been very slow at the beginning, but now they're keeping the updates, you know, fluent. And we'll be hopefully seeing those rewards being shipped in the film in stock at stores as soon as possible, which will help them tremendously. Also, Cinestill has an update. They basically told me in Fotokina that they had finished um, cutting the film and preparing everything for their rewards, the 120 and 4x5 sheet film. Now they have to ship it to their partner in Europe. I'm guessing it's Photo Impex, which will probably put the backing paper, spool and everything and ship it to everyone that, you know, helped with their fundraising. Talking about fundraising, New 55 has come out with a new fundraising for color New 55. I know that New 55 has been doing some prototyping of color film with the 20 by 24 um, stock, but now they're going full in for a project. They're asking for $400,000 to basically make machines to help with instead of assembling by hand, having things automated, which will help produce a lower cost and a lower cost for the product to the customer. This also means that this color um, peel apart film could be cut into different sizes. Also pack film, which is what everyone misses when Fuji discontinued FP100C a few you know months back. So if you really want to help and see maybe an instant peel apart film like the new 55 color or the pack film in a future, I recommend you help them out. They're asking, you know, for 400. They haven't even reached 100,000 and they still have a few weeks. I did an interview of uh, Sam Heiser, uh, the CEO of New 55. I'll link that up here and below so you can check it out. It's an hour long, so I recommend, you know, you grab a cup of coffee or use it as a podcast because, you know, the image isn't that interesting, but what he has to say, I think is interesting. Also on Facebook, I saw someone that came out with a camera called Panoral 5.7. It's a 5x7 cone style point and shoot sort of camera, but this camera not only shifts sideways, but if you flip the front cone, it will shift up and down. Then it has a bit of tilt on the front with a small bellows, which will help you with your depth of field. And the back is removable. Also, you can shift it to horizontal to vertical. And the best part of this is that this camera is being made by someone in Iran, which I'm sure is not easy. Film and chemistry in certain countries are hard to come by. And it's amazing this man came out with this product. I don't know if he's selling it yet, but if he does, I'll leave the link on the description so you can either purchase it, have a look, see his videos, which are really interesting. 
Also, Intrepid Cameras has finally shipped all the rewards and they have come out with an update of an Intrepid Camera 2.0 or second generation. Has a little bit of improvements weight wise and I think um, sturdiness is a little better. Some people can actually update their old camera because they haven't even used it. So if you feel like it or you want to purchase the update, I'm not sure about that, but contact them. I'm sure they'll be willing to help. Also on Kickstarter, we have the Focron XA Film Camera Shutter Speed Tester, which is a pretty long name. And this basically will test the shutter speeds on your film cameras. You know, when you buy a camera, you're not sure if the one seconds, one second or the one five hundredth of a second is that fast. Sometimes they're slower. So basically what this does is like a Walkman looking um, machine with a light source and um, receiver. So what you do is you place the light uh, in the front of the lens and you pay, place the machine on the back of um, the camera where the film would go and you just, you know, um, shoot your shutter and depending on the speed, it will tell you what, you know, actual speed was shot and it will give you a little, you know, graphic of how fast or how slow. If your shutters are okay, you can, you know, adjust it. If you're shooting slide film, especially in large format, it's really important to have your lenses calibrated as a bit of overexposure or underexposure will just ruin your, expo um, your sheet film. So I actually recommend you check it out. It's like $100, which is a great price for a shutter tester. There's still like a week to two weeks left. He's managed to raise all the funds. So, you know, he probably will make it. So that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any information, send me a link to the email below. See you next week.